Hi there, welcome to Tim's Desk London. Uh, today I'm going to do an inbox review of the new release from Revel. This of the, is of the Foost Design Ford FD100 pickup truck. Uh, this is in 125 scale. Uh, this is very complete new tooling. Uh, this is not a rebox of an older kit, uh, as it's based solely on the Foost Designs truck, which was highly modified at the time by the original uh, Foos, uh, I can't remember his main name, but his surname was Foos. Um, it's a lovely looking bit of artwork. I will say the Foos boxes from Revel are absolutely brilliant. Um, some of the kits they've done out there though haven't really lived up to the artwork. Uh, they've just been a re-box of an older kit with new decals and a different set of wheels. They haven't got that same sort of styling that you see on the box, which is a bit of a, which is a, definitely a bit of a shame. So with this, um, from the, what the pictures show, you are getting what was on the box, which is really good to see. Um, so let's have a little look on what you get on the sides. You get your painting guides on there, basic modelling tips from Revel on there, and your box. So it's for ages 12 plus. Level four, apparently five plus hours to do. Paint, glue, everything needed for that. Uh, then it's got a small piece of information on this side about the truck. I'll bring that in so you guys want to pause it, you can uh, read that through. Uh, and then we've got some uh, shots there of the, of the vehicle. It's got a, fo uh, foos, a, Roosh, sorry, a Roosh V8 in there, which is really nice to see. So that's what you get on the outside. Uh, so let's get the top off the box and see what's in there. So this is one of the American Revel style boxes. This is not the European style Revel uh, open end, uh, flimsy, useless boxes. These are the good strong ones which you can stack up multiples on and they're all the same size as each other which makes them great for uh, displaying in, in your stash. Uh, so let's have a little take that off, take the top off. So first up, we've got one chrome sprue there. You've got wheels, front grille, bumpers, handles, mirror. You've got the front cab, front cab and the rear bed area. Two axle bits of metal. Four very nicely molded low profile tires. There's no uh, names or anything on the side of the rubber, but the tread on them and the molding is really, really good. Clear sprue, front and rear windows, headlights. Then you get the main bag, as with pretty much all of these um, American car kits, they all, most of the main plastic all comes in one bag. So you get one, two, three, four, five, and then the sprues and then the uh, chassis in there and a, a clear red part. So we'll go through those bags in a second. The bottom of the box, you get your instructions and your set of decals. Let's have a quick little look at the decals there. So you get interior panels, you get the clock dials, you get all the Foose badges, uh, the exterior Foose badge, number plate, the ruche for the engine, uh, you get a rear bed decal for the wood. Uh, I'll probably, if I do, when I do do this, I've got some uh, veneer wood, so I'll be using that instead. And then you get a lovely little decal of the vehicle from the box cover, which is really quite nice. Nice idea. Everything's in register, nice and thin. Not, uh, I haven't got huge amounts of uh, extra decal film over the edge of the colors. So yeah. Nice decals there. Instruction breakdown. Let's go through this before we uh, go into the plastic so we can see if there's anything we need to look at when we're going through. So I'll zoom in a little bit on here. Uh, so first page, you've got your colour callouts, A, B, C, D, all your colours on there. And then you've got your part number, name, and so you know what every single item does on there. Uh, it's something that's quite unusual to revel kit on the car kits, um, which is quite, I suppose, a quite good idea if you want to learn and understand what you're building uh, as well as building it. It gives you a bit of knowledge 
along the on, as you go along, which is really quite good, I think. Um, another whole page of layout down there of parts. So as with pretty much all car kits, you start with your basic engine layout. Uh, so you've got you make up, you cut off and put some decals on your sump pan, your headers, and your intake. Build your main block, stick main block sump headers all on there. Start motor, pulleys, carburetor. I'll uh, we'll move that back in. Yeah, put pet pulleys, carburetor, distributor, distributor carbs, air filter. Put your decals on there. But that looks like it'll build up quite nicely. Put your headers, the exhaust on, drop that into the chassis. Exhaust on, there go to the back. Rear diff, rear drift, drive shaft. Put your brakes on. What looks quite good on here is they actually show you, you actually have a drilled and vented disc with the brake caliper there. And it's a decent sized looking brake caliper. From what I look though, this is all one piece. So you've got to be careful with your painting and your detailing on that, but it's a nice, it's a nice bit of added detail. It's not just a drum brakes standard issue down there. Uh, carry on putting suspension items on. You move up to putting more discs and calipers on the front, um, front lower beam on the front there. Make up your wheels, tires into the chrome rims. Put the shafts through so you've got your wheels fixed on. Then you move to your radiator, radiator cap. So that's then your lower chassis built. So that's up to stage eight is lower chassis on that one. So stage nine, you go to the interior. So you've got the two interior door cards, putting the decals on and painting a few items on there. Do your deco uh, do your seats, uh, painting them on there, do the certain items. Uh, it looks like you've got decal options for all of the seat parts as well. Uh, lower floor, dash goes in, sorry, firewall goes in. Then you get your dash, you get your steering wheel, your steering column on there, decal for your dials. Uh, you put your windows into the main cab body. You put your front radiator slam panel on there, as well as another little piece on there. You put your roof then onto the body. Rear bed, rear bed floor, and rear tub all go together on one. That then joins onto the chassis. You then put your cabin on, and then you put your whole front assembly onto that. Move up to step 15. You put your radiators and your front grill on. 16, put your rear bumper on. Hand door handles, filler cap. I'm gonna call it a bonnet just to annoy people. Or you can put your hood on. And that's it done. So it breaks down quite nicely. There's a good bit of detail in there. There's a good amount of parts to go in there to give the detail, but without being overly stupidly complicated and without making parts that you're just going to have a problem fitting them together everything looks like it's quite well thought out and just going to build up nicely on that so well done revel looks nice um and then you've got to pick your color you're going to paint the body um it shows black on the box art i think it's too nice just to do a black paint job on um what i'm going to paint it i have no idea yet uh that will have to be a lot of uh think through for what colour the shape of it is probably good there definitely has to be some sort of pearlescent to show off the arches and show off the shape because it's quite a nice curvy shape to it so yeah definitely thinking of that uh, right let me get the sprues out and we'll go through there okay I'm going to start with some of the main areas that concern modelers when dealing with car kits uh, or main, mainly any kits to be honest clear parts how good are they are they clear Oh, have they got any imperfections? Always a very important part. Chrome parts, how good is the chrome? How well is it being done? Are you going to need to strip it? Are there any location points which are going to cause you problems? Things like that. And then the shape of the body, seam lines, things like that on there. So I'm going to start off with the chrome. So first impressions, it's good. Everything's the same amount of chrome everywhere. There's no large pieces of flash on any of the items. It's a nice chrome. It doesn't look too uh, thick and heavy like, old, like older kits do. The wheels are absolutely wonderful. 
they are really really nice uh, slightly more deep dish for the rears than the front ones so that's a nice note uh, the joining uh, tabs for these ones are all inside where you're not going to see them you've got the front bumper section now this is this is a problem where you have a real issue here where the sprue gate comes along here and joins into this is right on the side of the headlight so when you cut that off you're gonna have a big chunk of chrome missing that's a real shame because you've either got one or two ways you can get around that you can either pretend you can't see it but you can you either have to strip the whole bumper and deal with this and then repaint it which is a shame because the chrome's really nice or you can try and get one of those little monoto touch up pens and just touch up that little edge and hope it won't stand out too much that's a real shame because those are quite that front bumper uh, headlight area there is quite a distinctive part of that so to have that that is a shame um i'm going to just check on the box on how you might just looking at the box not there you might be lucky and the, where they are they might just get hidden behind those front wings without cutting it all off i can't retell you, you you might you might be lucky it might tuck in but that's definitely an area which is a bit of a shame it's, it's just a bit it's just a bit of a shame anyway moving on um front and rear bumpers the gates are on the tops or the either the bottoms whichever way around to do it you can put them on the bottom on i think that is the front one so you can put them at a lower bottom so you can hide that one but the rear one they're on the top edge again on there um is it gonna be a visible area i'll have a quick look at the instructions yeah you again again you're gonna see them on that top edge right there and there so again you might you're gonna have to do something with that so there's a possibility you might if you if you're really fussy about it and quite pernickety there's a good chance you're gonna have to strip these chrome items to repaint them so they're how you want them to be which is a shame because the parts look really quite nice so moving on from that clear sprues uh always quite hard to see under the cameras but i can try and show you there's a little bit of distortion in that one but that's because i'm turning it in the camera it's not at the rear one's not absolutely perfect there is a little bit of distortion through it but it's very clear slightly distorted but very clear um Yeah, there's a there's a there's a scratch in my one. Nothing too bad. There's a little scratch that can get buffed out on the end there. Nothing too much of a worry. The front one, however, is really really clear and nearly no distortion on that one. It's really nice, very uniform shape. Both both of them look good. Nice and clear. Very low distortion in that front one, so that's going to be good for seeing the interior. Uh, good marks there for that. those two parts. Little scratch there on the rear one. No scratches on the front one. Oh no, it's saying that. Just... There's an ever so slight scratch on that side there, but it's, it can buff out. Both of them can easily be buffed out. Because I'd probably buff the windscreens uh, before putting them anywhere near the model anyway. Uh, so no... They've done good on the on the clear parts for that, so that's a good note. Tires, I'll try and try and turn it over so I can see if I can get in to show you the tread on them. There we go. There you can see that there. That's the tread on them. I think that's really really nice. Very nice tread on that tyre. Like I said, there's no markings on the sidewalls either side. Uh, they're such low profile, though, that it'll be very hard to get a nice clean stamp on them anyway. I'm sure they would have found problems getting a company to put their name to them anyway. But tread, wonderful. Wonderful indeed. 
Now onto the main front cab body. Just get that back over. This looks all to shape. Uniform shape, nothing looks distorted. Um, door. Doors look good where they should be. It's whiting out a little. It's unfortunately, as it being white plastic, when you put it under light, it doesn't half light to white out there. You can see the see the door shuts on there. Uh, handles are molded separate, which is nice. Like I said, the roof is a separate part. They must have found that easier when producing it to get the extra detail on the guttering, probably for around the top edge of the roof. So good marks instead of having to have a problem and having us modelers to sort it out. They've made it as a separate part. So good, good thinking there. Good thinking. There's no horrible seam lines that sometimes end up in up, up on these wings areas. So that's good because they must have dropped that sort of down inside there so that's nice and neat no horrible seam lines i can't see any sink marks the only one area seam line is this front lip which is really heavy you can hear that catch in there it's quite it's hot really hard to see in the light with it all being white yeah there's a there's quite a bad mold line on this side it's on it's present on this side but it's not as bad but it's it's really quite heavy that side um it's really quite a been it's quite a been drop, big drop in the mould. So you're really gonna have to sort that out. That's a that's a real shame. They've really dropped. I can try and get. See if I can just try and get this into shot, so I can show you guys what, what's in there. Do you see that step there? That front section of the mould. We should have done this piece here. So this body here. You can see it's been misaligned when I've been making it. Yeah, the other side. There's a very slight lip. But this side's really, that's quite a heavy one. Nothing, nothing that can be sorted, that's not going to get a problem with getting sorted out. It's just a shame. Other than that, that body would have been absolutely perfect. But there you've got to sort that out. Whether it changed the shape too much of the side there whether it's actually maybe it's more too much plastic here and actually could do with being sanded down that one because it does look like it does raise up to that point there and that one does drop drop a little bit so it probably does as you need that sand that lip sanding off instead of this lip ra lip raising sorry i'm not even a shot here so having this lip raised up to meet this this does look like this needs dropping down to there because it looks like it's too much plastic around this area compared to this wing. So yes, it's gonna need a bit of sand in there. But other than that, that's a good piece. Rear tub. Yeah, yeah let's have a little look with, off, off camera with my eyes a little better there. Okay, yes, that's looking really nice. It's got, instead of having the Ford on the rear door, it's got, uh, White's out so bad. Just can't, just can't make it. Try and get it in the shot. Oh come on! Yeah, there you go. You can just make out there. We are. There are. It says Foos on the rear door instead of Ford. So maybe they didn't have license. So it'd be good to not to have an option to have the Foos rear door or Ford rear door. So up to you. Uh, I know there's a lot of people out there that really don't like the Foos name. Um, I, I, I've got no care to uh, to the to the person, so I just I just like the kit and like the cars. Um, so up to say if you like the like the idea of it, but you don't like the name, there you go. You can take the rear name off there with a bit of a good scalpel. Other than that, it's nice and square. Arches are nice. There's no big seam lines or mould lines on either of arches. You've got a tab on the back here in the middle. At the top, where you was joined from the original mould, nothing that's, that's going to be hidden uh, easily. And then you've got a piece of cast in the middle there. I'm going to bring the camera back in it because I can't keep dropping you out of shot there. Um, so, yeah, nice piece of game. Let's get into the other bags and see what's there. Okay, so here's the rest of the sprues that are in the main bag. So, you've got one here with door cards, dash, another here with the main floor for the rear 
bed and the bonnet. Another sprue here with the axle and what looked to be roll over roll bars and steering. Another sprue here with engine, brakes, radiator, exhaust, headers, other parts of the engine. You've got the front cab seats and floor section. Last sprue over here, roof, firewalls, radiator front end, diffs, a bit more suspension on there. So let's start out with, oh sorry, yeah, and the little clear spread sprue. So clear, little clear red sprue. Yeah, as good as it needs to be. All good there. Put it out one side. Let's start up with the doors, uh, the front doors here. So nice detail, really nicely ridged detail on there. Um, this has taken a bit of a bash at some point. The inner door handle's got a right old knock to it there, which is a bit of a shame, but meh, oh well, little things to repair. Nice front speakers for the front kick wells. They're quite, really quite nice. Just make them out. Let me off the zoom, get zoomed in on that part. You can just about make those out. Some nice speaker grills on there. Front dash. Uh, yeah, for what it is, it's, it, I know the original truck is very bare uh, on details like that. So what they are there is, what is there, sorry, what is there is good for it. Yeah, it's all fine. Uh, and the only other parts in there are the steering wheel and the steering column. All quite nice, virtually, virtually no flash on any of those parts there. Which is really quite nice because some of the other, those Revel old car kits can be uh, a bit flash heavy. So it's good to see these newer ones really. Uh, they've changed it up and they've really made sure they've got rid of them. Um, no horrible ejector pin. E so ejector pin marks, I never keep saying that on call EPMs. No EPMs in anywhere visible on those parts there. So all good. Moving on to the rear bed. Uh, nicely ridged section on there so if you want to you could quite easily mask this up and paint it with a wood but you could probably get the use the wood decal from the kit uh, I may I sh probably will look at using a, some real wood on there so that's a nice piece the runner boards all nice and straight nice little ridges on the sides where they would be um, bonnet looks nice, all straight, all correct. EPMs, there's a couple on the underside of the bonnet, which are down the, right down the front there. They're quite hard to p pick out on there. Living white plastic, eh? Um, and there's a couple under there, but you're not going to see them. So no real worries there. Good parts. The front bench seat, nice looking, well moulded, nice bit of detail, no big problems with seam moulds, all good. Floor, it's actually got a bit of texture, it's even got the mat for the front, like the, the heel pad for the front driver on there. Okay, all good there. Chassis, bring that back out a little bit there. So it's got a slight, it, it, it does sort of seems to slightly toe in. I'm not sure whether it's this panel making it look slightly odd, but no, that looking, that's just looking all straight. Looking straight where it should be. Yeah. And you look, have a little look down the front. It doesn't, there's no, it doesn't look like there's any twist to it. It looks perfectly straight. So that shouldn't cause any issue whatsoever. Very good to see because having a car sit up on three wheels is just damn right annoying when it gets into the build. Uh, yeah, steering rack there and roll, roll bar there. Nicely detailed. There's some really nice detail actually on the ends of the uh, steering shaft area there. So a bit of a nice, nice, nice dirt wash in there, bring them out, make them look good. Uh, 
Uh, let's go for this one. Now, this is for the engine. So you've got your main block there and there. All fine. Radiator with your Kenlo fans. I'm sure they've got Kenlo fans on them. Good radiators. Uh, exhaust ends aren't hollow, so you only drilled them out, but what's there looks fine. Headers look quite nice. Pulley belt area. There's the intake. Rocker covers look nice. Sump pan looks good. There's your brake discs. There's a bit of your firewall. Now, what I wanted to have a look was, was there any detail for the drilled and vented discs? And there is. Now, can I get it to show on camera? I can't. No, it's not going to show, is it? No, I can't, I can't see it on there myself. Uh, but I will say, there is, it is drilled and slotted on each or all of those discs. Very nice. A little bit of flash on that edge of that one. It's the first bit of real flash I've seen on this one here. Just around the edge there. No real, nothing major, no real worries. But yeah, it's got all of the detail it showed in the picture. Um, on, actually, and on it's on both sides as well, not just one side. Top marks rebel, well done. Good to actually see them put that detail in. Uh, then on to the last sprue. Rear diff, suspension parts, firewall, front slam panel, and there's that roof section on there. So it's got a very nice, neat gutter that runs all around the edge. And it really is actually a very nice looking piece to finish off the top of that uh, front cab. Uh, no bad uh, distortion of the plastic, no sink marks, a couple of injector pin marks at the top, but they're not pushing through and making any damage to the top plastic, so that's really good to see. Uh, so right, so that's what you get in the box. Uh, let me get the all this back in side and I'll sit down and let, let you guys know what I really think of that. Okay, so that was what's inside the box of the new Revel Foos FD100. Uh, good points. I like it. It looks good. It looks like it'll be fun to build. Uh, it's got good detail where it needs to have the detail. The wheels are nice. The discs are nice. It's got a good look, good looking engine. There's enough detail on the interior so you can paint it up and make it look good. The detail on all the body is really quite good. Um, there's, so the bad points are the chrome, uh, those, those connection points for the, for the bumpers, for that front uh, chrome assembly there and the rear ones. That's a real shame. There's a good chance you're going to have to end up, might have to strip that back and repaint them. Not the worst thing in the world, but it's a shame that have you have to do that on there. Uh, the only other bad point was that front end misalignment of the original mould. Uh, that's going to need a bit of attention on there uh, and then other than that I couldn't see too much problems oh yeah sorry there the little scratch in the clear parts but that's no issue really that's just that can be buffed out with one of the older good trust trusty and reliable where are they I'll show I'll give it a quick plug quickly because I do like using them if you do have your clear parts I know a lot of people are very uh, much, oh, dip them in uh, Johnson's Clear or whatever, whatever they choose. I, I don't like the idea of that. Um, what I use is UMP's buffer pad. So they've got a green side and a white side. You can buff out most imperfections with the green side and then you'd repolish it with the white side. Once you've done that, use Tamiya compounds on it, you've got a perfect clear part. Uh, that's that's what I do for my clear parts. I don't see the point in dipping them in any, in any liquid. Um, so other than that, it's a good kit. Uh, it's actually very well reasonably priced. I think I paid near £25 for it delivered from eModels, which I think is really good because some of the car kits that have been shipped over from the US to the UK, they can get very, very expensive very quickly, which is a real shame because uh, there's just some really, there are some really good kits. They're just but with the importing... Uh, the shipping cost, the, the prices just go up and ho go high in them. It's not the importer's fault or the company that's selling their fault. It's just what the charges 
add up onto them. It's a, it's, it's a shame. It's a shame. But this one seems to have managed to come over the pond uh, for near the same price that you can get it in the States for the dollar, um, which is which is quite, actually quite good because I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with that price for a really quite a nice looking and different style of kit. Uh, if you're thinking about it, I'd say buy it. Uh, you could do some brilliant paintwork on there. There's a couple of companies out there that do flame masks for fronts of vehicles, and this this thing could look brilliant with some flame flames down the front end of it. Um, I'd say 100% recommended. A uh, little bit of modelling skills needed, but nothing too bad. Uh, thank you for watching. Please check out my other reviews on the channel. Uh, also my bench updates for what's getting built and what's going to be built in the future. Uh, thank you for watching.